Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Moritz from Alphamin. How are you? I'm very good, Tracy. Thank you for having me. You have had an enormous amount of news recently and some significant news, including uh, dividends, for instance, and an expansion on your original estimates for your mine life. Do you want to start there? Well, we have recently announced the expansion of our tin operations by developing the next door Bummer South deposit, and that would take us to almost 20,000 tons of tin a year, making us um, the world's largest tin producer outside of China and Indonesia. And importantly, in addition to our various growth initiatives, which we're funding organically from our balance sheet, um, we have commenced declaring dividends to our shareholders. Our first dividend was declared in February of this year. That was the final 22 dividend. And we recently declared and paid our first interim dividend for the 2022 financial year. Um, at the moment, we're running at about an 8% dividend yield. And that together with our growth ambitions, which are just about funded from our balance sheet, we think it, it makes for a, a powerful value proposition. Um, I think also, if I back you up to another news release, you were talking about record quarterly tin production. That sounds like newsworthy information for our audience. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Our current tin mine, the Mpama North mine, is really the backbone for where we want to go. This mine was commissioned in 2019. We increased its production from around 10,000 tons of tin a year to 12,000 tons of tin a year. And it's important that this mine continues to deliver consistently for us in terms of production and sales. And certainly it has been doing that. Um, in the last quarter, as you pointed out, we did produce record tin production, nearly 3,200 tons for the quarter. So that takes us well ahead of our 12,000 ton a year um, target in terms of run rate. Um, but really for us, the name of the game is to, to do around 12,000 tons um, from our first tin mine. It is really the basis for funding our expansion potential. Okay, so let's talk about this expansion. Uh, earlier on Investor Talk, you were discussing how the, the company is really investing on the infrastructure and expansion of the uh, Alpha Min mine. Do you want to, you know, what should we anticipate as shareholders? We are on a growth path of unlocking additional tin resources, which will lead to additional tin production for Alphamon. Why are we on this accelerated path? Because we believe the tin market has a significant supply issue and there's a likely supply cliff coming. Most of the world's tin is produced in China, Indonesia, and Myanmar. And as a unit, we expect less tin coming from these three regions in the next five years. You then overlay that with the fact that Alfman is the first major tin producer in 40 years, right, to have been developed. And very little exploration has, has occurred. So our strategy is to find more resort, tin resources, which we have successfully done, and to produce more tin into what we believe is a growing market deficit. So I just heard supply cliff. And I know investors out there are going to be a supply cliff. And uh, do you want to talk a little further about, for instance, when the supply cliff should be happening? So at the moment, there's a small deficit in the tin market. 65% uh, of the world's tin is produced in China, Indonesia, and Myanmar. China has been producing stable amounts of tin for the last 10 years and will continue to do so. So we don't see much more tin coming out of China and probably not much less. Myanmar is very interesting in that Myanmar went from just about no tin production in 2012 to 20% of the world's tin five years later. And Myanmar achieved this by mining high-grade alluvial tin resources on surface. Those have just about been depleted. They are now moving into hard rock mining, a lot of it underground, and Myanmar needs significant capital investment to sustain volumes. That's not coming, um, basis the political climate. As a consequence, Myanmar's production have been declining since 2007 and will continue to do so. So less than out of a major producing country like Myanmar. And then last but not least, Indonesia produces 20% of the world's tin and has made it categorically clear that they will be banning the export of refined tin from the end of next this year, actually. And the reason behind that is to create leverage in forcing upstream beneficiation in country. We don't believe there will be a total 
ban of, of exports out of Indonesia, but certainly we expect Indonesia to curtail tin exports from January next year, which means, again, less tin for the world. You then look at demand for tin, which is linked to growth in technologies, in electronics, in 5G, in EVs, solars, and the like. And we expect more demand for tin going forward, yet we're seeing less supply coming, which means the market deficit is, is going to grow every single year. Um, um, and to put it in perspective, if demand growth is moderate at 2% per year, the world needs another Alfman mine to be developed to come to production every single year. That's very unlikely to happen. Further to the question or the discussion on the demand for tin, uh, Byron, Byron King was talking in Investor Talk earlier about what an outstanding marketing deck you have, and in particular, a slide that you have about tin demand. What is in this particular graph that we must all go run to your website and take a look at? Sure. So, so Tracy, the issue is that the tin market is a, market is a very small market. Um, um, as a consequence, you don't have your major tier one mining companies involved in tin. Really, most of, most of the tin is produced in the East. Um, Rio Tinto, four years ago, commissioned the MIT in Boston to do a study on which metals are likely to be most impacted by new technologies. The outcome of this study was, was, was very, very interesting to say the least, in that tin was ranked top of the list in terms of the metal most likely to be impacted by new technologies. And when we say new technologies, we mean on the back of the technological revolution, the fact that everything is becoming digitized, there's more and more circuit boards, there's green energy in the like of, likes of solar power, EVs, and everything is just being digitized, you know, more smartphones and the like. Um, and the reason why tin was listed top of the list is that the impact was assessed in relation to the current market size. The tin market is relatively small. Supply is constrained. We know that. Demand for tin will increase going forward. And the impact of new demand for tin because of technologies will be significantly more than the likes of copper. Copper did not even list, reach this list, right? It wasn't even listed. Because the copper market is so large, it's 24 million tons. And yes, you'll, you'll use copper in EVs and electronics and the like. But in relation to its market size, um, um, much less um, on a relative basis to tin. So tin, tin is actually regarded as the technology metal, and and it's not really recognised in the West um, the way it should. Um, we we are seeing the West investing more and more in new semiconductor capacity, but soon we think the West will realise that without tin, semiconductors are really useless. You know that's the glue that 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 holds circuit boards together. That's the glue you need. To, to put a chip on a, on a circuit board and the like. And there's re no real uh, um, substitute that makes any economic sense, uh, sense for tin. So, so the, the, the outlook for tin, certainly from a fundamental perspective and from where the world is going, is very positive. Alphamin, of course, provides 4% of the world supply of tin. Did I hear you, hear you correct? That's right. That's right. Well, um, Merits, of course. As always, it's a pleasure. Next round, we're going to have you with Jack Lipton on Critical Minerals Corner. Thank you so much for an update on Alpha Min. Thank you, Tracy.